Hey guys, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles. And today we're going to kind of continue talking about how uh, the things you need to breed and what to kind of expect. And one of those things is obviously equipment. Uh, you know, we talked about rodents and we talked about kind of building some recessive projects and making a plan. But your equipment's going to either start off high end or you're going to change as you go. Most people who start off, you know, you get that first ball python, and you can look back at her setting up a baby kit, and you build your little glass fish tank, and you put it all together, and that works great if you have a pet and you have the time to care for the fish tank because your humidity requirements are a little higher and those kind of things. You know, and then you find yourself, at least I did with four of those, uh, and it gets to be just a pain. They're harder to clean, and I, you'll still see I have some glass cages, like uh, my carpet behind me and their green tree python, you know, what we still have to deal with, but that's just because they don't do as well in a tight, confined space. So the next thing I purchased when it was time that I was out growing wanting to do glass cages was this monstrosity here. Uh, don't mind some of the tubs are open. Those are actually empties right now as some things have grown up. So we purchased this huge monstrosity of a rack. Uh, when I bought it, I didn't have, couldn't fill the thing, and now we can overfill it. Uh, the cool thing is, this is, thing's old. It was a homemade rack that's changed hands several times. We had to disassemble it and reassemble it when we purchased it. We also had to replace the heating element in the back. I'll show you the heating element here in a minute. And then what we found was 41 quart Sterilite tubs, which, like these guys, work really nice in there. <laughs> She's like actually pressed against the top. Come here, girly. So you can fit an adult female in a 41 quart tub, rather nice, as you can see. And so, you know, and it fits in sideways where the back of this tank is actually what's heated. Now this is a little different than most racks I've seen. Most of them heat like this kind of a section, or we're heating the entire back strip, but only about that wide. So really didn't know how this would work, but we've bred this for several years, and honestly, we've been <laughs> really successful breeding in this in this rack. And we're breeding in it again this year with a few females. Uh, the nice thing about this rack is it also holds multiple size tubs. I found these guys. Of course, these are impossible to find now. Uh, but there's our little champagne females. You can see she's going up rather nice. Possible calico. Pretty sure she's straight champagne. But she's growing up really, really nice in there. And when she outgrows this tub, we can move on. The one thing when you do this on these homemade ones is tolerance. So the 41 quarts fit in there really tight. These don't, so I have to use a lid on these tubs. So the lid then can't come open and it holds together. These, the top makes the lid, but we do have these little turnbuckles just so they can't otherwise, believe it or not, I did have a female open one of these by herself without a turnbuckle. So we do have those just so they can't slide them open. Uh, we've also found other racks like these that fit in there. This is our albino holdback girl. Gosh, she's gorgeous. And uh, so we found these other tubs that also fit in here. So the nice thing about this rack is it fits a lot of different things and it holds a lot of snakes. But it is homemade. It is made out of the melamine. You can see we've had to brace it. You know, we've had to do some repairs to it. Uh, let's be honest, it's, it's ugly, but it gets the job done. And the other kind of rack that you'll run into after this is maybe you hire somebody to build a rack for you. And these racks over here I acquired from another breeder who was getting out of breeding. And they were a homemade rack by a local person who makes racks. They work really well for males. You can see they hold humidity great. What I don't like is this. Look how tight these tubs are. That one is actually one of the better ones, you know. I mean, the males fit in there really nice, but you can see pushing them back in, there's a lot of effort. Causes a little more water to spill out a lot of times, which is a problem they got to fight. One of the things that we've done to kind of combat that... Ugh, they're tight. Let's take my word for it. We actually had to use a little bit of Vaseline on the shelves to make things slide easier so it doesn't drag as much. So, but that also makes it kind of look... If you look, you can see it kind of looks dirty. That's from the Vaseline holding in anything that marks it. But without that, these tubs stick so bad they're almost too tight to make usable. So, as you can see, I hate waste, so we're still using those, and we're still using this. Eventually, I will replace these as well. Now, both these racks are heated in a very similar fashion, and I'll move this snake completely out the way to show you that. You have to kind of come in here with me, Kurt. 
you can see this router channel here. What's in this channel is a heat cable. So that heat cable is what heats up and the tub sets on it. As you can see with my finger, it's literally setting on it. And it heats up all the wood through about, oh, I can feel it from about here all the way back through there. Heats up a nice wide patch of wood. And the cable that's in here is a 400 watt cable, which is absolutely massive. It is designed to melt ice off of roofs. Now, if I let that run and just said plug it in and turn it on, I'd have cooked snakes. So that's a, that's a no bueno. So what we need is this little device, which I should have moved this stuff before I videotaped, but I forgot. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So don't mind my mess here for a second. What you can see is right here is a thermostat. This is a Herpstat 2. Now I've been through multiple thermostats. We started with the little dial ones that you really couldn't, uh, you had to like kind of trial and error to get the temp right. And then we went to these. And I really like these guys. They control multiple racks. Okay guys, and you can see that rack 1 is at 89.4 and rack 2 is at 89.9. Now this is a, uh, a different type of thermostat than a lot of them means that it can regulate the, the percentage of heat it's using. So rack one right now, the heat strip that I just showed you in the back of this big white rack is completely off. Rack twos are at 40%. It'll gradually increase that to kind of maintain that temperature to happy spot. I'm a really big fan of these Herpstats. You know, we used to have all the, the really cheap ones and, you know, they worked great, but I always, I didn't like that I couldn't read the actual temperature. These have alarms, they have shutoff mechanisms if the temperature's not doing what it should. So they fail in the safe mode instead of failing with the heat on, which is really important. Now, the way I track that temperature, Kurt loves this part because he's kind of short, so he's got to hold this camera really high, is right here is my probe. So I know that that spot right there is what I'm reading at 89.4, which is exactly where my snake lays. It's pretty much on the ground. So I'm getting a very good temperature actually in my tub. So we just bury that a little bit. Problem solved. Uh, I also run a backup thermometer in there to make sure what I'm reading is correct. Now, if you're going to do that, you have to be very careful putting a probe in your tub. The way we do it is we literally pressure fit it so it can't move, the snake can't push it out. It's going to stay there and not, you know, it may fluctuate up and down a little bit if the probe gets moved, but not to a great degree. Uh, it's very important because you don't want to put tape in your cage. Tape's bad for snakes. And you also don't want that probe to move because if it gets pushed to the cool side, that's the only way that that thermostat has of knowing what the temperature is. It'll just crank up your heat. You can end up with a hot area that's way too hot. So that's how we do that to make sure we're not going to have that problem. And so far it's been super successful. The next kind of rack we ended up with are these baby racks. I've got a few tubs out so you can see exactly what's going on. These are a little different setup. You know, these are professionally made. And you can see how easy the tubs slide. They're really, really nice. I really, really like these. Uh, they're back heated. Now I don't recommend back heating for an adult, but for a, for a hatchling it works great. And you can see the heat tape is back here, cage is pressed up against it, and that's where the heat comes from. Uh, one thing that I hate on racks is when they have that heat tape along the back and the tub is sliding on top of it. I, I don't like that at all. I don't want anything sliding over my actual heating element. That's why this rack has a routered and heat cable. Those two racks have a routered and heat cable, and this is back heated. The reason I don't want anything sliding over that heat tape is it's going to cause wear, and it can eventually cause a short. And I have seen horror stories from that happening where heat tape has had a problem and caused heat spikes and cooked snakes, and I really don't want that to happen. So my feeling has always been, the less wear on the tape, the less chance we have of that happening. Which brings us to our next rack. Now these, these are professionally built uh, through Tall Grass Reptiles and Eric White is who built this rack. And I'm a really big fan of it. This rack's only actually five high. We have two stacked together. With two stacked together and none to the side, it does make it a little bit on the flimsy side, but we're adding more here very soon, which these will actually clip and it will actually add the rigidity to it. So that's awesome. Uh, these are hanging, so these are heated from underneath. If you can show from the side here, Kurt, you'll be able to see, and I'll open one of these tubs for you. We'll go with, how about, which one would be easiest? Probably this one here. Of course, he picks my biggest girl to open. Ugh. And you can see where that heat is. I'll come around the other side. 
So this heat is mounted where it sets up high, and it's got a piece of heat tape that covers a basically about the back third, fourth of that tub. And again, we're on the same type of thermostat on a Herbstat 2, so it's run basically the same way. What this does, though, is with it being suspended, the tub, and if you look at the other ones, you can see the gap, isn't ever rubbing on the heat tape. So I'm not having to worry about that problem I was worried about with wear and it failing. And so these hanging racks make a really, really good option. The other thing I like about these, and I'll open one that Kirk can look into, would be this one. You can see they hold humidity really well. So we end up with a kind of a pretty moist area and a fairly dry area over the heat. You know, so sometimes I'll come in here and I'll kind of mix all that up to kind of get it around, you know, so it's not all all dry or all wet. That's one thing. If anything, they hold humidity almost too well. Uh, I do know of people with this exact rack, you know, snakes are running, they put ventilation holes in it to prevent that. But we just tend to do this and that tends to take care of it. It also helps make sure that you get everything cleaned out because the substrate does mask uh, feces. One nice thing too is you can see they have a built-in water dish. So that's really awesome. It does get some coconut dust in there, so you got to clean that out every now and then. What we need to do is place cups in there to make it easier. But having the built-in water dish helps prevent spills. Uh, it makes sure that the snake doesn't spill the water when you're gone and then have no water. It gives it a nice heat gradient so she can cool off when she wants. I'm still a believer in the heat gradient. I know some aren't, but I run a pretty nice hot spot of about 90, so I like a cool area, especially when they're trying to build follicles that they can go lay on and wrap around that water dish. So these racks have been really, really awesome. And that's kind of what happens. You know, you start with the glass cages, you then end up going to some kind of, you know, this is pretty much a Craigslist find. And, you know, and then you buy some more and then you kind of get tired of working with stuff that works, but it isn't perfect. So then you start going to the professional made stuff like these two here. And they start making life a lot better for you. And what you'll end up seeing as time goes on, and this is where you find good deals on racks, is people like me, here will soon, probably a couple of years, will be selling these. Why? Because I'll be out of room and I'll be investing the money in more things like these hanging racks to hold my mails and, and getting rid of the stuff that's not quite as efficient. Uh, this one will probably always be here just because of the space that it takes being sideways allows me to fit more in the room. But it's one of those things in your equipment that you got to plan for these expenses too because racks aren't aren't cheap. You know, and even if you make a nice Craigslist find like we did on this and get a great deal on it, you know, you still got to buy tubs. Now, when you go to Wally World, these tubs, which these are 41 quart Sterilite, run about nine bucks a piece. Okay, so it adds up pretty quick. Then when you start pricing out racks, like if you go and you contact Eric and you price this rack, at first you're probably going to say, man, that's pretty expensive. But when you start adding in the materials, like the tubs, because these tubs are more expensive than these, you know, the actual heat tape, the wiring, and this is actually XPVC plastic, so it's not melamine, so it's going to last forever and it's really strong, you start realizing that there's not a lot of profit for the guys making these unless they make a bunch of them. It's just mostly material expense, and so it is just an expensive piece of equipment, but you've got to have a place to house your snakes. It's kind of like the rats. If you don't plan for this, it's going to be rough. And what I mean is, and camera guy Kurt can confirm this while he's back there behind the camera, you know, this year we sold a bunch of snakes, but we didn't put any dollars in our pocket, did we, Kurt? No. Not a dime. What we ended up doing was... Buying equipment, things like this, and a few other pieces of equipment that we bought and are, are currently making, and some and some animals. And next year, what are we going to do most likely? Buy more racks. Buy more equipment. So you're constantly feeding your own beast, and so you have to prepare for that. Uh, that's the biggest thing I can tell you is, you know, people look at it and they go, well, if I get here, I buy these snakes in two or three years, I can sell them for X amount. Well, you, you can. But you're also going to need this, and you're going to need this, and you're going to need to add this. And so those first few years, you got to plan on working, working, working. Okay, You're going to work a lot, and you may sell a lot, but you're going to have to reinvest that to really grow what you want to do. If it's really where you want to be, you're going to have to put all that fund, or the vast majority of it, 
right back into it, probably open up your own wallet a few times too, I know we've both had to, to keep it going, to get it to the place where you really want it. And we're just kind of at that spot, I can kind of see that light at the end of the tunnel, you know? And so I know where I'm headed and I know I can get there, but, you know, it, it's going to be a lot of hard work with a little pay for a while longer yet. And I'm okay with that, but I hope you are too, because that's really what the future of this is, is basically you're going to spend all your money buying equipment, buying feed for rodents, if you're rodent breeding setup, whatever it may be, you're going to find that there's things that you're going to want and need. Kurt, any questions about racks, thermostats? Is there any racks or thermostats that you would kind of shy away from? Uh, yeah, like, I would shy away from, for me personally, now as the people that have used them and had great success, so if I'm talking about something you have, don't get mad at me, it's a personal preference. Like I said, any rack where the actual tub is sliding back and forth across the heat tape, just over time, I'm afraid it's going to wear. So I would shy away from that. You know, now if the heat tape or like the cable, because I've got some that use tape and some that use cables, recessed, you know, where it's not actually making contact with it, then I feel good about it. That's why I like these hanging racks. Again, it's not actually making contact. The weight's supported up here, and it's not weight sliding across that. As far as thermostats go, um, I think you're okay, you know, running uh, an expensive thermostat at first, but at some point you start adding up the investment you have in your reptile room, and it just makes sense to invest in a good thermostat. I have had a thermostat fail before on a cheap one. Uh, fortunately, it failed off, thankfully, but it was kind of an eye-opening lesson. So now we run we run the Herp stats for almost everything we do. I have one uh, crappy thermostat left. It's this guy over here. You know, it works well, and it's on a single cage where I've got the probe mounted underneath, and it's set up for... It used to be on a baby rack. It's not really for a baby now. It's for that rattly noise you hear. But for the 90% of my stuff, we're running the herp stats. I think you're fine with herp stat. It's my personal preference. I think you're fine if you use VE or Vivarium Electronics. You know, uh, Helix is another brand that's out there I've heard good things about. So there's several that are good, but I would shy away from anything that you can't find reviews on that other people aren't using. Like, if you can't find a good review on it, I wouldn't trust my ball python collection to it. So, any other questions, Kurt? No. Nope. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, if there's anything else you want to know, let us know. We'll kind of keep covering some of the things we think that are important to breeding, some of the things we think you're going to need just as far as moving forward and growing your business. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next week.